When it comes to the interactions between two children, things can very easily become very tense. As children are learning the skills to have a proper conversation with one another, sometimes their ideas don't come out the way they want them to. And so, there ends up being a misunderstanding between the two children. When this does happen, the instinct is usually to go to the one person that they think will be able to help them, and that is the teacher or the adult. We see this within classroom dynamics, the dynamics between siblings, or just really, really good friends. Sometimes it happens so often that it becomes puzzling to us why this is the case. What interactions have you come across where you've seen two children, they're playing, they're having fun, they're doing something together, but then all of a sudden their conversation, their interactions go south. And then it becomes this struggle for the children to feel like they need to have the last word. How about being the one in the middle where two children are having a problem that needs to be solved and they each run to you to make their case? How have you interacted with them or engaged in these situations. Picture this. You're in a classroom and you're working on some art with a few children at a table. In another area of the room, are two children who are quite friendly with one another. In fact, let's say they're best friends and they've been playing for quite some time together. All of a sudden, you hear one of the children say, no, don't do that, while the other child says, no, but I want to. And within a matter of seconds, it turns into this no war of who can say no the loudest. You turn your body to show the children that you notice what they're doing and you're paying attention. One of them turns to you to say, can you tell them to stop doing that? They did this and I don't like it. How would you choose to engage with this specific child that has asked you to say something to their friend? Would you follow along with what they're saying? Or do you have any other ideas? Problem solving amongst children is not easy. There are so many things that they are still learning and so it takes a lot of time to work through their issues. With that in mind, it's understandable why they would opt out to tell an adult and have the adult to solve their problems for them. Thankfully, we know that eventually we each need to have the skill to be able to work through our problems, to have the confidence to do so to have the skills to do so, to have the willingness to do so. Now on the flip side, we as adults are quite guilty of solving children's problems for them. Sometimes we think it's less frustrating, it's less time being used, or sometimes we just think that we're able to do a better job and so why not? Ultimately, all of these reasons are valid and true. But as we want to foster more pro-social interactions with children, pro-social postures within children, it's important that we support them to see their own responsibility when it comes to problem solving. In doing so, we don't just leave them be. Rather, we enter into that space with them to help them facilitate and maintain this space where they're able to work through these problems. For these two children in today's ordinary moment, these interactions were not something that were new. In fact, they had been going on for quite some time. Reason being is because they would play, have fun, and then they would hit these walls, hit these problems that they would have of not listening to one another. And every time they would hit these walls, they would run to a teacher to have the teacher help them solve this problem. Eventually, they got used to this pattern, and it sort of became a race to see who could get the attention of the teacher fastest. As I noticed these interactions and saw this window of opportunity, I ended up telling the child that, hey, it sounds like something is really bothering you. 
why don't you tell your friend? Unfortunately, the other child ignored what this child was saying to them. And so, I pointed out to that child, hey, it looks like your friend is trying to say something to you. Something is bothering them. It's important that you listen so that you can work through this problem together. They very reluctantly lifted their head and looked at their friend. Their friend ended up looking at me as if they didn't know what to do. And so I reminded them saying, hey, you had something you wanted to tell them. Why don't you try again now that they are looking at you? This back and forth between child, teacher, child, friend went on for quite some time. But eventually, they were able to understand that they each had an idea of how they wanted to play. But if they didn't give each other space and time to listen and know what the other person wanted to do, then they would just end up hitting these walls again and again. For these two children, they needed to understand when they needed to speak and when they didn't need to speak, when they needed to listen, when they needed to act. At the end of this moment, they were able to go back to their playing and enjoying each other's company. But the days following, similar situations happened again. And once again, the teachers and I had to help and facilitate and support them through these moments. We would hope that it would be as simple as explaining it once and they would get it. But knowing ourselves and children, it's often a long process to understand these things in a way that we can concretely remember and use them in our interactions. With that said, because it is a process, it just shows how important it is that we continue to help and facilitate these spaces for children. As we as the adults take our time to do this, then we are allowing children the space to work through what they need to work through. A space where they have the freedom, the power, and the willingness to watch, think, be.